Fear is a fundamental and inherent human emotion. It serves as a built-in alarm system, allowing us to detect potential threats in our surroundings. Fear can be triggered in two different ways. The first is logical fear, where fear is a rational response to an immediate danger, such as fire or a wild animal. This type of fear is necessary and can help us take appropriate action to protect ourselves. The second type of fear is triggered by memories, experiences, or imagined scenarios. This type of fear is associated with the amygdala hijack. It can interfere with our lives, leading to excessive worry, anxiety, and avoidance behaviors. In an amygdala hijack, the amygdala overrides the rational part of our brain, causing us to react instinctively rather than logically. Our fears can manifest in many different forms, each with its own unique characteristics such as phobias or acute fears. But in this video, we will be addressing abandonment fears after having survived being scapegoated by a narcissistic family system. Being cast aside as the black sheep of a narcissistic family system can leave you feeling like an outcast, a mere afterthought. The disdain and rejection you faced may have planted deep roots of fear within you, affecting how you view yourself and your place in relationships. Abandonment fear can have a profound impact on a scapegoat's life. Your upbringing may have left you struggling to find validation within yourself, trust others, and manage your emotions. This imbalance may stem from a deep-seated belief that love is a scarce resource only given upon condition, and if attention is given elsewhere, there won't be any love left for you. This struggle to maintain a healthy balance in relationships can draw the wrong kind of people into the scapegoat's life and can push away those who genuinely care. Abandonment fears are marked by several key indicators. Survivors who struggle with such fears often find it challenging to trust others as they anticipate inevitable abandonment. They may have an intense fear of rejection, especially in social situations, and may struggle to establish and maintain relationships due to being excessively clinging or avoidant. Setting boundaries can be difficult, as they fear it will lead to rejection. Abandonment fears can also trigger anxiety, panic, and intense emotional responses to rejection or disappointment, often stemming from past experiences or a lack of secure childhood attachment. As a result, individuals with abandonment fears may grapple with low self-esteem and difficulty in forming healthy relationships. If you find yourself struggling with your own abandonment fears, remember that overcoming them is a step-by-step -step process. Give yourself credit for the progress you have already made and be kind to yourself as you continue to heal and grow. You have already demonstrated your resilience every single day and with time and patience, you can replace self-sabotaging patterns with healthier ones that align with your values and beliefs. Having said that, let's talk about the healthy practices we can implement to help us deal with those abandonment fears, starting with the art of saying no. The fear of abandonment can make us feel compelled to please others and prioritize their needs above our own in a subconscious effort to avoid being abandoned. So let's take a moment to examine what saying yes really means. Saying yes means agreeing to invest a significant amount of energy, time, and resources for a specific purpose. When we say yes to something we feel we should be saying no to, we say yes to sacrificing a part of ourselves 
that we may never get back. This may involve doing something that makes us uncomfortable, causes us to lack resources for ourselves, drains our mental capacity, and negatively impacts our mental health, all for the purpose of keeping another person who may or may not cherish us in our life. When you agree to something that you cannot truly afford, you're chipping away at the very essence of yourself. Each time you do so, you're left feeling empty and depleted. The question that lingers is, how will you refill the void that's left behind? Unfortunately, the answer may be that you cannot. When you give away time that you cannot spare, you're left with no time for yourself. When you give away a service that costs you money and resources, when you're already struggling to stay afloat, you're left without the means to survive. When you sacrifice your peace, well-being, and emotional safety for the sake of pleasing someone else, the harm caused to your mental health will stay with you and you will be the only one responsible to keep yourself together in the aftermath. Once something is done, it cannot be undone. Meanwhile, the person you are agreeing to help or please may not have the same perspective or understanding of your capacity as you do. They are living their own life, focusing on their own goals, their own priorities, and may not fully understand the impact of their requests on you. Even if they do, they may not always care. We may believe that because we sacrificed ourselves to fulfill another person's needs, they will surely love us back or reciprocate when our resources are low and theirs are plentiful. This will not always be the case. If you don't prioritize your own well-being, relying on someone else to do so is a risky gamble that may not always pay off. Keep in mind that ultimately, you are the only person that you can trust to have your own back. You are your own safety net. I would not advise for you to cut off your own ropes, hoping that someone else will catch you when you fall. True love and healthy relationships are built on mutual respect, trust and understanding of each other's needs and boundaries. Sacrificing ourselves, not out of a sense of healthy responsibility, as a parent would for a child, for example, but out of fear of being abandoned, will inevitably lead to living a life filled with resentment, frustration, and anger. Self-sacrifice is not a normal relationship routine requirement between two capable adults. This unhealthy, sacrificial mindset has been taught to us by our dysfunctional family system, where our boundaries were not respected, and the needs of one family member were consistently prioritized over the needs of others. This can lead to a pattern of codependency, where we believe that we need to sacrifice ourselves in order to gain love and acceptance from others. Narcissistic covert abuse conditions us to believe that we are not enough just as we are, that we are unworthy of unconditional love unless we bend over backwards, and that we should sacrifice our needs while simultaneously elevating the needs of the other person above anything and everything in the name of love. An inability to say no may also backfire and push healthy friends away. If we never say no, we may eventually begin to feel resentment towards people who set healthy boundaries for themselves. And this feeling may cause us to inadvertently sabotage a good friendship. When a person sets boundaries and communicates their limits, it can be easy for those of us who don't know how to say no to misinterpret this as selfish behavior. 
especially if we are used to going beyond our limits and draining our own resources for everyone all the time. We may feel heartbreak or even betrayal to hear someone else say no, as we always said yes to everything they asked, while in reality they are simply taking care of themselves, which is a crucial aspect of any healthy relationship. A safe person will respect your limits and a healthy no is to be expected every once in a while. You see, love is not about sacrificing your needs, but about nurturing them. Setting boundaries and communicating our needs is an essential part of any healthy relationship. Saying no is not selfish. It is a necessary and healthy aspect of self-care. It is important to recognize the difference between a healthy yes and a fear-based one, and to create a balance where both parties can feel respected, heard, and loved even when the answer is the occasional no. Maintaining a balance between caring for others and taking care of ourselves will avoid feelings of resentment and unrealistic expectations of others. To practice saying no, it's important to be aware of our own limits and communicate them clearly and assertively. It's very difficult to take care of others if we are consistently feeling depleted. How could we love others healthily and be a safe person to someone else if we are not emotionally well, if we are resentful, if we don't have enough for ourselves, if we don't feel physically healthy, and if we don't love ourselves. It's important to be mindful of our own needs and to make time for self-care and self-love in order to be able to have healthy and fulfilling relationships. The next healthy practice to implement is the art of asking yourself, what's the worst that can happen? When dealing with abandonment fears, it can be easy to imagine the worst possible scenarios and becoming overwhelmed by feelings of anxiety and insecurity. Asking yourself, what is the absolute worst that can happen? And preparing a strategy to accept it can help to reduce the impact of these fears and improve your emotional well-being. For example, if you have a fear of being abandoned by a romantic partner, the worst case scenario might be that they do in fact leave you. To prepare for this possibility, you can develop a plan to take care of yourself emotionally and financially. You may then relax and enjoy the ride and see where it may lead you knowing that you can always fall back on yourself if it doesn't work out. Another example would be the fear of being abandoned by friends. The worst case scenario might be that they do in fact stop talking to you. To prepare for this possibility, you can focus on a hobby, activities that make you happy, self-care and self-compassion as a way to take care of yourself emotionally. This, in fact, will make your life richer, and you will feel more comfortable with your interactions, knowing that your entire world doesn't revolve around a particular group of people. Preparing for the worst-case scenario does not mean that it will happen, but it can help you feel more in control of the situation and reduce feelings of anxiety and insecurity. It is a way of being realistic and at the same time preparing for the worst so it doesn't catch you off guard. Having said that, being prepared for the worst case scenario does not mean that you have to accept it as inevitable. You can be present with the people in your life, practice your communication skills, lay down healthy boundaries, and see what happens. You can do all of this comfortably knowing that you have your own back no matter what happens. The next strategy may sound a little counterintuitive, but it is a healthy practice nonetheless, and that is the practice of letting them go. 
Let them focus on you when they want to and because they want to, not because they have to, because you made them, or because you went out of your way to get their attention. When dealing with fears of abandonment, it can be easy to fall into the trap of trying to control others in order to prevent them from leaving us. When we are constantly trying to control our environment, we are not facing our own fears or insecurities. We are not learning to trust ourselves and our own abilities to handle any potential rejection or abandonment. We are not addressing the real issue. We are only projecting our issues and insecurities onto our environment. This is not peaceful living for anyone involved. It's important to remember that every person is autonomous and has their own agency. We cannot control their thoughts, feelings, or actions. Additionally, trying to control our environment, how other people think, and the choices they make will cause them to feel resentful and trapped in the relationship. Your narcissistic parent may have taught you that love is a limited commodity that must be competed for. They may have also taught you that love can be withheld at any moment. However, this is not how love truly works among safe people. People in your life can have friends, hobbies, and passions outside of you and still have plenty of room in their hearts for you. The more freedom a person has to be themselves, the more authentic the love they have for others will be. Trust and growth are important components of any healthy relationship and cannot be achieved if one person is constantly holding on too tightly. If the relationship does not work out, you will be fine and you will move on. But if it does, the trust cultivated can become an unbreakable bond. By shifting the focus to yourself and working on building your self-esteem, you can learn to value and accept yourself regardless of the presence or absence of a relationship. Self-awareness is the practice of being aware of one's own thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. It involves observing and understanding the self and how one's thoughts, emotions, and behaviors interact and influence each other. When we become self-aware, we are better able to regulate our emotions and make more thoughtful decisions. Additionally, being self-aware allows us to identify and challenge negative thought patterns and beliefs. Self-awareness can be a powerful tool in managing abandonment fears. By becoming aware of our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors, we can identify the root causes of our fears and develop strategies to deal with them. Additionally, self-awareness can help us to identify and change maladaptive coping mechanisms, such as avoidance and numbing behaviors, which can perpetuate the fear. By working on your own self-esteem, you can learn to trust in your own abilities and worth, rather than relying on the validation of others. It is important to remember that you are in charge of your own happiness and that you don't need anyone else to validate your experiences or your worth. Healing and empowerment are always within your reach through self-awareness, personal development, and reaching out for help when you need it. You can confront your fears by understanding the origins of your abandonment fears and becoming mindful of their effect on you. With time and effort, you can learn to build healthier relationships, establish strong boundaries, and regain a sense of self-worth. By embracing your resilience and inner strength, you can break free from the shackles of abandonment fears and forge a brighter, more empowered path forward, filled with self-acceptance, meaningful connections, and personal growth.